Uh, good evening. How are you? Good. I'm happy to be here. Um, it's been a bit too long uh, since I've been back in Paris uh, meeting with customers and getting to share a lot of what we are working on at Adobe. So thank you for coming out. Uh, it's been actually about four years uh, since we've been able to do one of these events here in Paris, and I'm just so grateful that we are finally able to gather again um, as a creative community. Uh, so four years is a long time in the fast-evolving creative world that we live in, and a lot has changed. And I would argue a lot has changed for the better as well. I feel like there has never been a more exciting time to be in the creative industry. Uh, not too long ago, the daily life of creative work felt a bit lonely. You know, we would define ourselves narrowly by discipline, whether an illustrator or a graphic design or a photographer. We often worked alone, you know, isolated in the tools that we use every day. But for many of us, creativity is now opening up in new ways. For one thing, creativity has become far more collaborative. For many of us, when we start a new project, the first thing we start to think about is who are we going to work with? Whose assets are we going to leverage as we work? And then we kick off a modern creative process that is distinctly different from the past, where we can see each other work in real time, oftentimes in the same exact document, where we leverage each other's assets rather than starting from scratch, and where we recognize that in some ways sharing is the new networking. That's how we become known in our world, by, by, by sharing, by being more transparent. The modern creative world is really bringing us together and making us work together like never before. Uh, the nature of what we are creating has also changed in the new mediums that we're creating for. Most big company marketing budgets are increasingly shifting towards social media. And social media isn't just graphic design, isn't just photography, isn't just video. It's mixed media. It's mixed media. And social you know, social's just not segmented the way our outputs used to be. And so whether you're creating for TikTok or Instagram, creative segments all have to come together. This is the new way that we're working. And not only are creative professionals challenged to create for mixed media, but everyone else, from small businesses to students to content creators of all kinds, recognize the opportunity to build a brand and to really stand out on social platforms. Some call this the creator economy, but I think it's just the rest of the world getting excited and feeling empowered to be creative. We've entered an era of humanity where creativity is the new productivity and job security in the future will require everyone to develop creative and storytelling skills especially as you know, robots and algorithms and artificial intelligence really take over a lot of the repetitive, mundane tasks of creativity. The next generation you know, needs to sort of stand out you know, in whatever they're doing with the tools and skills to express themselves. At Adobe, we feel the key to helping people create in new ways is to bring creativity to the web and the phone and make it much easier for creative people to collaborate. And that's why we launched Adobe Express recently, a web and mobile app that gives everyone the tools that they need to do complete, you know, to complete quick creative tasks and uh, get things done without a steep learning curve. With Express, you can either create something completely new or you can get started with one of millions of pieces of stock or templates, and then you can make it your own with photos, texts, colors, other things that are specific to your brand. We really designed Adobe Express to be far more welcoming you know, to the world as it relates to creativity. But Express is also great for creative pros who need to get something done super quickly to complement their work. You know, if you need a quick thumbnail for a video that you're making for YouTube, uh, uh, you know, you can, you can use Express. Um, if you need a, a quick QR code for a project you're doing, um, if you need to make a quick edit to a PDF, you know, Express is able to do all these things very quickly. Uh, Express is also connected to Creative Cloud libraries. And so non-pros, you know, social media marketers, et cetera, can be connected with the pros that are actually you know, setting the design for the brand. Beyond Express, we are also on a mission to bring all of Creative Cloud to the web, to unlock all sorts of workflows and possibilities. We've brought Photoshop to the web so that you can now make light edits uh, to pro Photoshop projects anywhere. And uh, you can share a link with anyone, and they don't even have to download Photoshop in order to collaborate with you. And we've released uh, just this week some exciting new features for Photoshop on the web, including curves, refine edge, dodge and burn, uh, other things that give you more powerful editing capabilities that were all requests from our customers. 
We have a lot more that we're working on that we're excited to share with you, you know, once it hits the product. We've also added and are building a few very new powerful um, web features to streamline creative collaboration. So last year, we welcomed the Frame.io team to Adobe. Frame.io, for those of you that don't know, is the premier video uh, collaboration platform. It allows you from within Premiere Pro or After Effects and other video products to get feedback on video from all of your stakeholders, clients, uh, colleagues, and then that content, that, that feedback comes straight into the product. We've also introduced cloud documents, which makes it much easier to share files, access them anywhere, and make sense of the changes that people are uh, making to your documents with version control. And we're rolling out Share for Review in Creative Cloud, so which lets you share a file directly from any of our apps, clicking Share. And, uh, and then you can share a version of, or that, a moment in time of whatever you're working on and get feedback from clients streaming into the product so you can iterate in real time. So we've made a lot of progress in bringing creativity to the web and streamlining, streamlining collaboration, but there's still so much more to be done. So uh, again, excited to share with you uh, updates as we have them. Another great development in the creative world over the last few years is that creative people are more able to get attribution and opportunity uh, from their work. You know, for too long, agencies and companies that employ creatives get all the credit for all this great stuff, as opposed to the creatives who are actually doing the work. And today, there's just a lot more, you know, there's a lot more opportunity and ways for creatives to get credit for their work, get commissions, and grow their careers. Uh, the problem of attribution in the creative world is actually one thing that really inspired Behance, the, the company I started many years ago. You know, today, more than 31 million members are using Behance to showcase their work, get jobs and freelance gigs, and build a following that yields opportunity for them. And then there's other technologies that are empowering creative careers. You know, there's NFTs and other digital online experiences that people are using to get career opportunity. And like all, new, like all new technologies, it's very early days for some of these uh, technologies, but you know, we're, we're focused on trying to solve the problems and, and, and find out how they might be helpful to all of us in the future. Um, we're advocating for eco-conscious eco solutions when it comes to blockchains, for example, and we're promoting transparency in who actually did what piece of work. Um, we have something called the Content Authenticity Initiative. It's a consortium of hundreds of companies now that Adobe helped organize that is building an open standard for securely documenting the provenance of an asset. And what that means is that when you actually make something in one of our tools, you can add content credentials to that asset. So when it shows up in the New York Times or on BBC or anywhere else, you can actually see who created that asset, which is exciting. And it helps people know what's real and what's fake. Uh, another example of technology changing creativity for the better is artificial intelligence, which is saving creative people hours and hours of time, and in some cases, letting them do things that they just could never really do before. I mean, creativity is about exploring and trying things, not just repeating things. So for example, speech-to-text capability in Premiere Pro, this uses our artificial intelligence engine, Adobe Sensei, to automatically add captions for all of your video. And this is a huge time saver in and of itself. You know, it increases the accessibility of this content. But also, if you need to make an edit to a cut, you can just search by keyword and find every instance where that, the subject in, in your video footage said that word. And that helps you navigate far more quickly tons of video content. And our customers in Premiere Pro absolutely love this. In Photoshop, in Photoshop, we've added the Sensei-powered neural filters. These are really cool. Uh, neural filters help you change a subject's frown to a smile. You can literally change a summer landscape to winter. Um, and with an upcoming neural filter, you can, with just the push of a button, actually restore an old damaged image. Now, lots of Photoshop users were able to restore an image before, but it just took so long. You know, every little speck, every uh, scratch, you know, every color being restored manually. Now, Photoshop's uh, restoration neural filter can just do this in seconds. And if you didn't know how to restore an image, now you actually have a superpower in Photoshop that you didn't before. 
Technology is also opening up whole new mediums. I mean, the primary example right now is the new medium of 3D and immersive content. I mean, smart companies are using 3D design to accelerate their product design and creation of marketing materials today. And of course, you know, 3D will be the foundation for the so-called metaverse and other immersive experiences to come. Technology in applications like Substance 3D Collection has made creating in 3D so much easier and more powerful. And that is opening up just huge opportunities for creative people and modern companies all around. You know, designers with 3D expertise are in tremendous demand right now, and creatives are responding to that demand. In just the last year, you know, we did a survey asking customers you know, what they're being asked to do, and the number of people who are telling us that they're working on 3D went up over 20% in the last year. The trend towards 3D creation really picked up speed during the pandemic. I mean, two years ago, we were all isolated. It was impossible to get a big group of people together to shoot product images for catalogs or websites. And so companies started to render those images in tools like Substance 3D as opposed to shoot them the old fashioned way. And what they found was that this new 3D production pipeline was actually better, faster, and cheaper and more sustainable. At Ben & Jerry's, for instance, by switching to 3D creation, they were able to produce thousands of visual assets in weeks instead of months and for a fraction of the cost of a traditional production process. 3D creation has been a tremendous help in designing new products as well. So apparel maker Salomon, for instance, is using 3D to design shoes. And of course, I know our Salomon friends are here in the, in the audience. They found that 3D design cut the time needed to create a prototype, but I believe an average of around 67%, but we'll hear from them later. And perhaps more importantly, by using Substance 3D, they were able to produce 10 times as many design iterations. I mean, as you all know, creativity is often a function of trying lots of different approaches to see what works. And so 3D design is so efficient. It really allows a creative team to experiment far more. And again, you're going to hear more about Salomon's approach later this evening. So that's how 3D design is helping creative people and companies today. And in the future, it's going to be even more essential. I mean, right now, as you all know, the word on everyone's lips is metaverse. And I'm excited about the potential of these enveloping new immersive experiences that we'll come together in that defy the laws of uh, space, you know, time, and physics. There's a lot we also don't know about the metaverses, but here's something that we do know. It will only succeed, like every new medium of the past, if it is rich with interactive, beautiful, and for immersive experiences, three-dimensional content. And so the way to get metaverse ready for you as a creative in your career, for your team, or for your company, is to start producing content in 3D. By creating in 3D, you are building the skills, the workflows, and the partnerships you need, you'll need to create these future metaverse experiences. And you give yourself the freedom to experiment. You'll be building a strong library of 3D assets and designs that you can then deploy in pilot projects, collaborations, all sorts of experiments and trials to come. I mean, ultimately, the metaverse will come to fruition through creative people and companies trying lots of different things. And by developing your 3D skills now and building this storehouse of content for your brand, you have the freedom to jump in and see what works and what doesn't and become one of the architects of this new and emerging medium. Now, content is just one layer of what goes into creating a metaverse experience. Devices like AR headsets and glasses that we'll someday wear are going to be essential. We'll also need to develop an economy that governs transactions in these metaverse experiences. And we're also going to have to be able to deliver these experiences in smart ways. To effectively deliver metaverse experiences, brands are going to need to personalize them and really analyze what's working and what isn't working and just keep testing things. And that's something that we're working on with Adobe's Experience Cloud. In fact, this week, we announced an update to Adobe Analytics that will allow brands to measure and analyze engagement in 3D experiences, and, and, uh, and it just starts the, this new world of delivering personalized, amazing, engaging experiences. So we're talking a lot tonight about the Adobe Substance 3D Collection, which is an indispensable set of tools for 3D designers. And since we're actually in Paris, I have to give a shout out to the Substance team, which joined Adobe about three years ago. So Substance was actually born here in France. 
It's an amazing team. And I'm really pleased to say that much of the original team is mostly still intact, innovating near here in, let's see, in Clement Ferrand. Did I say that right? <laughs> I tried. Uh, the journey of 3D creativity over the next few years is going to be a really, really exciting one. And I'm so glad to be here uh, on the journey with, with all of you and to have our team you know, in France leading the charge. So if you're not already uh, working in 3D, I hope I at least whetted your appetite to check it out.